take only three pieces. Happy Halloween. Put some pieces back or else. <laughs> and now is happy dance. Today, I'll show you how I made this COVID safe robot trick or treat delivery system. Interested? Here we go. This has been a real fun design project. I've been thinking actually about this for ever since I got this guy and even before I got a robot. I wanted something that was fun. The whole idea is to kind of conceal the rig a little bit so that when kids and everybody comes up to the house, that they won't know that it's actually a robot that can move around. This guy can actually trail people. And I've got some ideas on how we're gonna do that. You can see that the bottom of the pumpkin is cut out and that's so that the pumpkin has the, as much mobility as possible. The challenge I had with this trailer hitch is that the way it turns is it goes sideways like this because of the tracking wheels. We gotta be a little careful about that but I've come up with a way where if you actually slew the camera, it actually tracks and it does a little better of a turn. So hopefully that's going to work out well. I was going to do it anyway, and then it came up to the COVID and people got nervous about going trick-or-treating. I hope people do go trick-or-treating this year and they're going to be really safe at our house because we'll have this guy and if six feet isn't enough, we can actually drive it to the edge of the driveway and have all the kids be able to take as many pieces as possible but this guy will keep an eye on them and if they take too many he might have to invoke his too many candy claws we started out with one of these hollow pumpkins i actually got a whole bunch of these a couple years ago for five bucks it was just kind of plain even though it has been painted i took and mixed some real brown big orange and came up with some highlights Coming up with the right configuration on the face, you wanted to make it bold enough, is I wanted this thing to move up and down. I'm probably gonna put the little shooters in there just for fun. Initially, I was gonna black these out, but then one of my kids said, hey, why don't you use the lights in the robot? Because the ro robot has different color lights and all that stuff, so we're gonna do that. We wanna give the robot a costume. So I've got this little platform I made here out of an old box, some cloth, and some gaffer's tape. And that's gonna go over this guy like this. And then I've combined a whole bunch of elements that I've been doing, and you'll see these in other videos coming up, about a trailer hitch for this RoboMaster. And this is just actually one of my camera fixtures that goes down here, and it's going to connect to the trailer. It's the black, it kind of looks like a pumpkin that's been around, maybe it's past its fresh date, you might say. Just want to make it look a little bit eerie, a little really solid on the Halloween, but not too scary for the little kids. So let's get to the trailer. Okay, I got these little LED lights. I'm gonna put them under here to represent the fire. Now let's switch you guys around. So I've got a little candy cauldron, you might say, and then I've made this trailer. I wanted it lightweight enough so that the robot could pull it. I've done some initial testing and actually have some weights in here to represent candy. Eventually we'll have candy in here, but I just want to make sure all this concept will work. And then the other challenge was to get it so that it would be at a low enough level so that the robot could really pull it well. And so I came up with a hook here, just an extension. And this is actually just one of those furniture roller that I got at Harbor Freight. Then you just take this off here, you put the hitch on, <laughs> and you're ready to go outside. Bit of an update. I really wasn't happy the way this was looking. It's kind of chintzy with the aluminum foil, so got rid of that, and I found this tray at a party store. Pretty cheap. I'll put that guy on here. I'm just using some tape. Then here's my candy kettle. Then I have a two and a half pound weight, which is going to represent the candy for now. And I'll put that guy in there, and I'm probably still going to use these candles underneath. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And then I've got this guy, his platform on, and he's 
able to turn around. I'm probably going to have to... This is a little bit of a swivel, and there might be some advantage to that. We'll see. We had a couple of setbacks, but I think we're getting there. First of all, the gimbal was, was having problems because there was some blockage between the platform we had made. So we're going to have to cut that circle out a bit. But let me show you some features of this robot. Anybody gets out of line, we can fire the gun to startle them. And you have options to leave a message. So here are some messages that we can tell the trick-or-treaters. Please only take three pieces. Happy Halloween. I see what you did. Put a couple pieces back. Or else. <laughs> Okay, so the gimbal is overheating, so I might have to cut some holes in the back and lighten this up a little bit. You can see that it's, it seems to be tilting back a little bit, which means it's a little heavy in the back. A couple updates. First of all, I didn't realize this pumpkin weighed almost 10 ounces. So what's that mean? Well, the robot gimbal here can only take so much weight. I was hoping if I balanced it out, that might help and you know, try to get it on the pivot point, but it was a bit too much. And so I've made these little holes here for the back and then the front I took a little bit off the sides. The great thing about this though is that these sides light up and so that will be able to project light on the sides. I did cut the hole and took another inch off of the platform. I've shaved several ounces off the pumpkin now so I'm hoping that the gimbal is going to work correctly. And so this is the way it's going to look on the side and it's mounted in the front by these two posts that tie into these two clips here that have gone with the holes that are available to the robot. And on the back are two little mounting screw points here. So I tied the back of the pumpkin in with these little extensions. So I've got both halves that go in place and it's the lightest thing I could come up with. I decided to gussy up this a little bit and make it a little more representative of a pot that's been around for a while. And how did it do that? So I used some rub and buff and a black marker. And it's a combination. The reason why is that you can put this rubber and buff on a little too much at times or if you're trying to get this little groove here it's a little difficult. So what I want to do is make it look kind of worn. Well actually a lot worn. And so what you do here with the rub and buff, so I use a glove. Some people use their fingers. And all you do is put it on a little light and then kind of spread it around. And this is trying to simulate wear marks. And what I was finding is that sometimes, for example, over here, I strayed a little bit. Supposedly you can use acetone to take the rub and buff off, but I found it's near impossible once you've committed I take the marker like this and I went down just did a little of this and took a towel and blended in the marker with the rub and buff there's a spot I want to hit right here and that seemed to work really well to get it to the conditioning or the aging process of where I wanted and I really like the outcomes of using these two colors to kind of give some dimension to the pumpkin. Here it's all just one straight color, except for the top, but this really does give it dimension. And then the marker really kind of gives it an aged look or kind of a deep soul look is what I'm looking for there. All right, let's do some drive-bys and test on speed. Back him up. Looking for a target. Hello. It's tank steering. 
you're not familiar with these guys. Back him up. Oh. Don't run into the candy thing yet. So you can steer him a little bit with the head by slewing the gimbal. Not bad. But what we really want him to do is truck around candy. I haven't gotten the candy yet, but I do have a two and a half pound weight, and I'm going to put that in the candy cauldron, and we'll see how he does. Come on. It's a little crooked. Yeah, let's go here. Come on, it's like a tractor pull of sorts. <laughs> okay, we're going to see if the drone can pick me up, lock on to me, and follow me. In case maybe I take too much candy. There we go. He's identified me. And if I back up, he backs up. Overall, a very successful test. I'm really amazed at how much this guy can pull, how he can kind of control it. The wheels aren't helping because they're just rollers from a caster, from a furniture mover. Otherwise, the robot's working great and I'm really happy. Now let's just kind of decorate him up, finalize this and get him ready for Halloween. After watching the video, I noticed that the back end was sliding a lot. So I locked out the casters in the back with some cable ties. The front ones still turn, and that's not a problem. I think I've solved the gimbal problem. I was amazed I could literally take this to the end of the street, or in this case, the far end of the parking lot, and we were still controlling the thing. So I have no doubt this guy's going to work out really well. All we're going to do is just kind of take a couple final decorations, add it to the robot in the trailer, and we're ready to go for the trick-or-treaters. This build was a lot of fun, and I'm really excited about showing it to the neighborhood kids at Halloween. That's why I'm in this isolated location, so it will be a complete surprise to them. I've got several more Halloween decorations and ideas and cosplays coming up, so stay tuned for those. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, making and breaking things, honest reviews, home repairs, check out my channel and please subscribe, because you never know what you're going to see.